Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for attending this informational session on job opportunities with the AmeriCorps Volunteers in Service to America program with the San Diego Promise Zone. I am Christy Marcella with the Jacob Center for Neighborhood Innovation, and we are hosting this informational session because it's important that young people in our communities know that this opportunity exists and that they have the ability to learn about how they can gain professional skills that can not only help their career, um, but that can also help the communities in which they live and reside. Um, over the next 30 minutes, we will be talking about the opportunity to gain work experience while servicing your community. Um, specifically, the Promise Zone works toward advancing the multicultural neighborhoods in San Diego, south of V8, from Barrio Logan all the way to Encanto. We know that there are a lot of young people out there who are in college, who have had college experience that are just looking for a first opportunity to work for the city um, or to get that level of professional experience that can really help launch their career. And we think that the VISTA program is one of those opportunities available to you all. So with that, I'd like to introduce CEO Crespo, Promise Zone Manager for the City of San Diego. CEO? Hi, thank you, Christy, for hosting us today. And thank you everyone for being here today. With me today are also the Interim Deputy Director of the Economic Development Department, Monica Hartman, and Alex Souther, the Promise Zone Program Coordinator leading the recruitment process. Before we begin, I wanted to provide you all with initial context about the program you will be applying to. And Alex, feel free to jump in if you um, feel like it if I miss anything. So first, I would like to tell you a little bit about the San Diego Promise Zone. So a child's zip code should never determine their destiny. But today, the community they grow up impacts their odds of graduating high school, their health outcomes, and their economic, you know, lifetime opportunities. Through a collaborative effort, however, between private business and federal, state, and local officials, including faith-based and nonprofit organizations making up the current more than 65 partners of this initiative, the San Diego Promise Zone uses a collective impact model to connect organizations to funding and capacity building opportunities. Now, America's VISTAs are a key part of that capacity building through fundraising, grant writing research and volunteer recruitment, and they serve in an office setting and gain experience and leadership skills. This opportunity prepares members for a life of service in the public, private, or even nonprofit sector. And members serving in the AmeriCorps VISTA program do serve a full-time a full um, you know, commitment for a one-year term and within the promise and directly support its working groups and communication initiatives effectively generate the commitment of private sector resources, encourage volunteer service at a local level, and empower individuals and communities by building relationships with them. So we have shared with you links to all of the positions currently available and that we're recruiting for, but all of them are a full-time one-year commitment that includes a modest living allowance, a financial education award upon completion, professional development, experience working with local government, and a lot more. So today we have key voices joining us that include previous and current AmeriCorps Vistas to answer some of your questions regarding the benefits of that year of service. Starting off with Elder Sanabria, who joined the LA Promise Zone in early 2016 as a program associate, where he played a key role in supporting the implementation of the LA Promise Zone. He staffed the Education Working Group, helping pilot a college and career workshop to address knowledge gaps for families and empower them to advocate for their children. As an now manager for the LA Promise Zone, Elder advises and leads the implementation of LAPC strategies, along with HUD and various city departments. Welcome, Elder. We also have Eric Henson, who was born and raised in Council District 4. For joining the Office of Council Member Monica Montgomery Stepp as a policy advisor, Eric was a zoning investigator under the City of San Diego's Development Services Department and had several internships across public service agencies. Eric's policy interests focus on land use and the environment, community development, and economic development, as he feels these are factors that connect people to the idea of place and prosperity. So thank you for being here today. Also from the Office of Council Member Monica Montgomery Stepp or Tiffany Harrison and Karen Montufar Federico, who've had experiences as AmeriCorps Vistas in the past. And lastly, joining us today are the current AmeriCorps Vista serving the Promise Zone Initiative our resident rock stars, Ali Carter, our communications associate, Haley Wench, our community engagement associate, and last but not least, Kelsey Baird, our digital inclusion and development associate. Thank you all for joining us the time and taking the time to share your experiences. I'm kicking it back to Christy to walk us through some ground rules. Great. 
Thank you, CEO. So we have prepared some questions for each of the panelists um, to just prep everyone. But please know if you have any questions for those of you that are tuning in, please put them on social media. We'll get them. And after we've gone through and run through the questions with the panelists, um, then we'll have time to answer your questions as well. So we have assigned each of the panelists one of the questions, and we are going to start off with Elder. Elder, can you let us know how did Vista Service help you help you get to where you are today? Thank you, Christy, and, and thank you, Zio, for the introduction. Um, thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be among you all today and appreciate a chance to, to talk a little bit about my experience, um, particularly as it comes to uh, my my time as a, as a VISTA member and, and how I kind of um, joined the, the Mayor's Office of Economic Opportunity here in Los Angeles, um, it was very important for me to identify um, a project, a VISTA project that was aligned with my own aspirations. I always knew that I wanted a pathway that would ultimately leave me with several options post-service. Uh, so the Promise Zone project specifically was able to provide me insight not only into the sponsor organization, but with the organizations that were also partnered with the initiative. So in my role in the mayor's office um, today, I don't I don't just lead the LA Promise Zone initiative, but I also support in various education related initiatives. And through my experience, I was I really had a chance to learn about grassroots leadership and community organizing, fundraising, grant writing, um, through, through grant writing research, um, and am able to apply those those same types of activities and and things that I had done in my current role um, in the past as well. So understanding that value about what collective impact um, can do and, and what it really can can actually look like um, through through government um, has been a really essential part of, of what I, I took from that as uh, Vista service. Um, in addition, I'd say you know also through the support of those working groups, which you know already vary from topic to topic and policy area, definitely allows you to tap into multiple service areas to really get a good grip on what you might like to do. Um, so it gives you a chance to learn about more about these partner organizations, the neighborhoods they work in, the and the services that they provide um, to really give you a sense of you know what you might be good at um, depending on the the role you have within the Vista project itself. Um, I thought about it as a kind of year long job interview. You know, every day you get a chance to spend two you know time with some organizations, whether it's two to three or or even some days when you're when you're working in working groups that might be dozens of them, and they work in either housing, government, education. You know, I realized that I wanted to support. Um, you know, I wanted to to continue in the support of neighborhoods um, and communities and found a pathway to, to government specifically that utilize the skills I put to practice every day during uh, my time as a VISTA. So, you know, I used every opportunity to work with others to learn more about each organization, which, you know, served a very valuable pur purpose to not only provide the Promise Zone project with on the ground knowledge of community needs, but also personal professional insight into what I might be able to use my, exp my VISTA experience for post-service. That's awesome. Thank you, Elder. Now we're going to switch over to Eric. Eric, can you provide some context on the importance of doing work in the neighborhoods that comprise the Promise Zone? Um, with that in mind, what kind of qualities and skills you think are important for someone to be successful as a VISTA? Um, thank you, Christy. Um, what I think is essential for the Promise Zone, you know, being it is a place-based initiative, I do think um, you know, for lack of a better word, there should be some um, kind of like cultural competency or at least understanding of um, interacting with different uh, cultures. And, um, you know, that I think in a situation, it'd be ideal for people who, you know, might have had some exposure to uh, social work, uh, probably uh, the planning field or just even, you know, basic, uh, you know, community organizing and uh, being a service provider, um, you know, to do needs assessments, things of that nature. Um, I think just in general, having some kind of understanding and passion to learn about the different um, forms of community character between, you know, our different uh, planning areas, such as, you know, the Barrio Logan uh, planning area, obviously, Southeastern in general and, and in Canto. Um, so having some kind of familiarity about, um, you know, some of those like guiding uh, programs and, and documents that talk about the future, you know, where those communities are going. And I think uh, that can work hand in hand with, um, you know, some of the projects that the Promise Zone seeks to tackle. And also just having a general understanding of all of the, the, you know, various, uh, you know, government jurisdictions involved, like we have San Diego Unified, right? So having a good understanding even of, um, 
the education field, uh, you know, the transportation system, you know, we get more into the infrastructure, um, you know, challenges and opportunities. So, and, you know, obviously the San Diego Housing Commission, which is connected to HUD and, you know, and HUD is a big driver of, um, you know, the promise zone. So housing and urban development for those um, that, don't, that aren't aware. So that's what I think would be some good qualities, just having that, that you know, that, that cultural like competency and, you know, understanding of, of where, you know, these neighborhoods are going and, and how they're unique, you know, um, it's something I think that's overlooked in, you know, um, San Diego planning practice. So I think um, that's a big uh, opportunity. Great. I'm going to ask a really quick follow up question to Eric, which is, Eric, you talked a lot about areas is, you know, being a resident of the community and living in communities or neighborhoods in the promise zone, kind of a first level of experience that would be helpful to these vistas when you talk about the transportation system, like if they use it or, um, you know, some of the areas that might feel technical to the people who are watching, but um, just maybe you could elaborate on if this is your daily life, you have that experience. Can yeah. You maybe, yeah. Yeah. You know, again, I think, I think it's even something that's under understated and um, place-based, you know, initiatives. I, I think when you, you have people that have that lived experience, uh, they are like a wealth of knowledge uh, because they are, you know, experiencing the gaps in the needs assessments that, that have to occur. Right. Um, when you're you're analyzing that that data for you know how somebody's going to be served, uh, you know for example we have a service provider in um, the Encanto area and and southeastern area which is Project New Village and you know they've had they have a relationship with San Diego State and understanding you know food audits and looking at the amount of uh, uh, food access opportunities or lack thereof right so having that firsthand experience with those gaps in the needs assessment already puts you, you know, further ahead. Um, and, you know, for those that may be in the San Diego region and may not have as much experience, I just think having a general understanding of that, you know, discussion we have quite often about the, the you know, North of eight and uh, South of eight, um, you know, divide, um, you know, it's not something that people just say, um, you know, some of it's tied to like infrastructure policy from the past that has created that pattern of disparity. So even someone that's just familiar with that, I think, and wants to, you know, um, invest in areas that have been historically overlooked, I think is a big step too. Great, thanks, Eric. Um, now we're gonna switch over to Kelsey and ask what training opportunities have you all experienced thus far as part of your year of service? Yeah, thank you, Christy. So uh, when we first started, um, we were given a really extensive orientation, uh, a binder this thick, full of <laughs> everything you could ever want to know about the city, which it was overwhelming, right? But um, it sinks in over time. So, so that was a great experience. So we got to learn about um, council offices and how decision-making is supposed to work and um, all of our partner organizations that we work with. Uh, so, so that was great, just that orientation. Then um, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, came, uh, came and uh, gave us some, um, some, orient some formal trainings on how HUD works and uh, the federal government works and, and just things like that. So housing policy, the history of housing policy, so that was great. Um, and then I would say the most worthwhile experience has been just in the field. Um, so attending meetings um, and just working directly with the community-based partner organizations that make up the Promise Zone. Uh, that's been really, I know I'm having connection issues. So my internet's really bad. Um, so should I stop? No, you're fine. Going? You're good. Okay, okay, okay. I look really weird on the screen. Okay, so I think that, yeah, so in the field and working directly with partners and just attending meetings and learning how um, decision-making actually works in the city has been uh, invaluable. And this is, this is a great way to become uh, really familiar with just all aspects of uh, the, how the county works, how the city works, how the federal government works, how community-based organizations work, um, both formally and informally. 
yeah, and I'll pass the baton over to Haley or Ali if they have anything to add and don't Great. have connection issues. Thanks, Kelsey. That they are up next, Ali and Haley, who are also current AmeriCorps Vista um, service members, are going to talk to us about what a typical day looks like for you all in doing your work supporting the Promise Zone. Ali and Haley. Thank you, um, Ali. Do you want to take it away? <laughs> Okay, I'll start off. And um, I guess to Kelsey's point, there are really so many educational opportunities kind of embedded, uh, not just um, through the, the coursework, the big binder you get, but also in the day to day interactions, the exchanges, you're always hearing about really cool uh, webinars that you can tune into. And um, one of the interesting things about the pandemic has been that everything has been remote. And there are definitely is the side to that where in the remote and the transition to the digital, there are so many really cool webinars and um, speaker series and panels that you wouldn't necessarily hear about otherwise. So I'd say a lot of my day-to-day, -day, I tune into at least one or two uh, webinars that our partners are doing. Um, for example, uh, last week there was one um, two of our partners did about digital equity um, through UCSD. So that was really cool. And then other day-to-day -day activities, um, I do communications. So I will check out partners' social media accounts uh, to see what events are happening in the area, uh, what resources our partners would benefit from knowing so that they can pass them along. And then also uh, supporting the working groups as needed. Yeah, oh, and I, you, Haley. Thanks. Yeah, I definitely add on when it comes to training, just to close that loop. Um, you know, learning from our partners is really a big, um, a big part of this position. Um, and you know, just learning from what's already happening in the community and being at the table at a lot of those meetings really is helpful um, and a super great learning experience. Um, and we do have a lot of like over 60 amazing partners um, and they're really helpful because they want us, they want to help us and they want to help us learn. So um, it's really helpful being invited to different meetings and webinars and just tuning in. But yeah, a typical day in my life, um, well, in my work life, um, my position is community outreach, but more so what I've been doing is operations with everything going online and the pandemic. It's definitely been a different workplace. Um, and, you know, going out in the community isn't really an option because of safety. So um, usually my day is, you know, in front of the computer, checking emails, attending meetings, um, a lot of checking in with partners and just, you know, making sure everyone's on the same page and um, documents for upcoming working group meetings. Um, I kind of help manage our healthy communities and housing affordability working groups. So a lot of my day to day is just managing those two groups and, you know, making sure everything is up to date. Um, and then a lot of internal tracking for the Promise Zone when it comes to operations, um, you know, tracking different partner documents and a lot of grant management. So uh, a lot of tracking grants and things like that. But, you know, um, any of the new vistas coming in, it's always going to be a slightly different role. And every day is a little different. Um, I feel really lucky with the vista team that we've had. I feel like all of us are really good at kind of picking up the slack or helping out in areas, you know, kind of all over the place, being very flexible as you have to be during a pandemic. Um, but yeah, I would say that's kind of the general day to day. Great, thank you ladies. Um, and so now we're gonna turn it over to Karen and Elder um, and hope that they can talk to us about some of the options available to you after your year of service with AmeriCorps Vista. Hi all, um, my name is Karen. I did LISC in 2016, so it's been like about five years now. Um, and some of the opportunities um, available available to you after you complete your service is obviously there might be an opportunity to, to stay with the organization that you're doing your service with. Um, you know, as someone mentioned, you know, every day, I think it was Elder actually, every day is like that, um, like that job opportunity or like interview process um, to, you know, see if you if you're a good fit with the organization to stay long term. Um, I know some people in my cohort, they went back to school. 
some went back to law school or they just, you know, went on to higher education, um, taking into account, you know, the um, experiences they had, you know, in the community and being able to apply that, you know, at a research level or whatever other um, space they wanted to go into after. Um, and I went into election work after. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of um, opportunities um, with your the cohort that you have. Um, there's a you have you're exposed to a lot of different organizations so you never know um, what opportunities might come up um, at the end of your service yeah and i'll i'll add i'll add to that as well you know i think um, that vista service to promise zone specifically gives you a plethora of options you know i think because of the prestige of the federal government's longest running and successful place-based program and its recognition about how vistas are critical to the success of that program um in addition to to the school which which was one that i i went when thinking about this question i was the, I, I didn't quickly jump to that so i'm glad that karen had a chance to to talk a little bit about that um but you know for me there was always three very clear options but there's certainly way more than that um, you know, the first was was either, you know, federal federal opportunities with the year's completion because of that preference and non competitive eligibility that you receive from completing a year uh, Vista service. And one of the things I'd, I'd really like to kind of hone in on about that is, you know, pre, you know, 2014, I'd say, you know, the federal government had had not really fully understood how to kind of use that non compete eligibility with with a lot of the vistas. Um, but fast forward um, to a couple years later, you know, working with promisones, there was a, a clear pathway to actually identifying vistas as as potential future employees for the federal government. Um, a lot of vistas across the country um, have actually gone on to work for HUD or for other federal agencies that are partnered with the Promisone partner um, program. So that 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 was always kind of one that I always talk to to my vistas about. And, and, and we've had several of our vistas go on to either work for HUD at other Promisones, um, funny enough. And so it's it's really great to kind of keep that that a lot of that engagement um, kind of consistently, right? And so that was one. And then the other I'd say is is local and state government using that experience, understanding that working with community capacity building partnerships and contributing to initiative success are all qualities that governments like to see. Um, and so, you know, that's that's that a lot of that is kind of how I ended up in the same role as, you know, being able to kind of, um, I think it was Ali and, and Hilly who mentioned a little bit about grant tracking and understanding how grants work and all those little things that you might not have thought to to actually, you know, anticipate, like I'm going to learn a lot about this particular uh, grant and getting to know, you know, what makes it work and what makes it a success. Those are all really like neat, neat qualities that that governments do like to, 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 to see and, and, and are in very uh, much need of. And so the last one, which is something that a little that Karen um, talked a, a little bit about was around the partner organizations that you work with, you know, perhaps you, you might find a specific organization that you're working with in your working groups um, that you'd, you'd want to have a chance to actually work for or continue to perhaps just work in that field. Um, and this service allows you much more options to decide that than your typical VISTA service. Um, I think I heard that there was about six, more than 60 partner organizations, um, you know, and, and one of the things that I, I really like to hear um, uh, earlier was that, you know, the, the partner organizations definitely understand what the, who the VISTAs are and what they do. So this is an opportunity to showcase your skill set and identify, you know, what what your post service might 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 entail, whether that's going to school to learn more about something you, you did earlier or to capitalize on the skills that you picked up during your year of service. So it's important to keep a list of that work that you're doing, um, you know, constantly in support of, of partners and neighborhoods to be, really be out really be able to identify the skills that that'll translate to your next job. Great, thank you, Elder. That really creates a great segue to our next question is for Alex, which is to talk about in addition to the preference of eligibility after your year, what are some of the other benefits of serving as a VISTA? And we actually had a question come through social media that also asks, um, what kind of resources do you need to do the job effectively? Um, specifically, do you have to have your own laptop and Wi-Fi was asked. So if you could address those, Alex. Thank you, Christy. Uh, yeah, happy to address those questions. Um, there are definitely a lot of great benefits that um, come with serving as an AmeriCorps VISTA. Um, Elder just mentioned the non-compete eligibility uh, that 
anyone who completes a year of AmeriCorps service can get, which is um, essentially um, a leg up in the hiring process for uh, federal positions. We recently just had an AmeriCorps VISTA um, leave us and, and move on to a job with HUD um, as a result of having that non-compete eligibility. And I believe we're gonna post some more information in the chat about that. Um, in addition to that, there is also an end of service award and it's either a cash stipend or it's a, um, an education award. And I believe the education award is around $6,000 and that can be applied to um, current student loans or future student loans or any type of um, education expense. Um, and we can also provide more details on that as well. Um, some of the other benefits, a lot of the other um, current and former VISTAs have touched on, which is um, professional development, um, learning how the city works, learning how the county works, um, learning about different departments within both the city and the county, and then also the benefit of working alongside all of our uh, partners, which would be nonprofits, um, some small businesses in some cases, and then even um, other federal agencies like HUD and the county as well. Um, so there's a lot of great uh, professional development um, and training opportunities there. Um, there are, as um, Ali and Haley mentioned, a lot of great webinars. We also um, have been able to get VISTAs to attend the Nonprofit Academy, which is a partnership or a, an event that is in partnership with um, USD. Um, so there's trainings like that or opportunities like that throughout the year that we're always looking out for to make sure our VISTAs can um, get some really great um, experiences and training. Um, there are other benefits as well. Um, for certain folks who may be eligible, there are some childcare benefits and there are some healthcare um, benefits as well. Um, as far as resources, um, so currently right now we're all working remotely. Um, we will provide uh, VISTAs with a laptop. VISTAs will also need um, a Wi-Fi connection and if that, we don't want that to be a barrier. So we're um, able to work with VISTAs on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, at some point we will be going back into the office, but for now everything is remote. Um, I would say those are the key um, key components to being able to to do the uh, the job right now. I think that covered Great, everything, Christy. right, Christy? That did cover everything. There was one related question, which is if someone is a VISTA alum, maybe not with the city or not through the city program, can VISTA alumni still apply to be Absolutely. for this particular opportunity? Absolutely, and I would strongly encourage you to apply. Um, we would we would certainly love to have uh, VISTA alums um, serve in these roles as well. So yes, definitely. Great, thank you, Alex. Um, and so we are coming close to our half hour mark and we know all of you young people out there are very busy, probably juggling work and life and school and the global pandemic. So we are going to finish our question um, with Tiffany and Monica to ask you all, why should people tuning in to this apply to be a VISTA? Well, I will jump in and start. Good evening, everyone. Monica Hardman. I'm the interim deputy director for the Economic Development Department. So glad that you guys are taking time out of your busy day to join us. Number one, I would say that the city of San Diego is an awesome organization to work for. I've had the pleasure of working with four different distinct city governments, and I can honestly say that the staff have the heart to serve. They're very passionate, they're engaged, and they want to make a difference in their community. So that's huge. And you see that from the mayor's office, the council member offices to economic development and all the various offices. And most importantly, we have the opportunity to work with our community partners because the community partners are the ones who are the boots on the ground that are getting the job done. So this is an awesome opportunity to not only learn what city government look and feels like, but you also get to build relationships and partnerships with community organizations to really determine what kind of space you wanna work in. So um, I think it's a phenomenal opportunity. Would also just like to mention that if you do decide to come join our team, you'll have the pleasure of working with a very um, wonderful leadership team in Zio and Alex. And um, these young women are top notch. They listen very well. 
and they're very motivated to help you get the most out of your one year experience. So with this opportunity, there's a lot of flexibility, especially, you know, at least starting off in a pandemic to kind of, you know, move and shake and, and um, mold the opportunity and what you really want to learn and what really interest you. So if you're interested, we please highly, you know, encourage you to join us and we're all available to answer any specific questions that we can't get to you tonight. We can always talk to you offline. Hi, this is Tiffany Harrison with uh, Council Member Montgomery Stubbs office. I would say the benefit of becoming an AmeriCorp period and gain the experience is being able to test out your ideas and to be creative. Um, there's not a lot of environments out there where you'll have a supportive structure, um, but you'll also be around a team that will be able to professionally develop you. And the things that you have taken from either your learned experience personally from growing up to professional experiences, you can combine that and solve what you're really there to do as a AmeriCorps, and that is to address poverty and to eliminate it. So um, if you are, you know, the type of person that wants to try things out and um, test your ideas before you make a career decision, um, if you want to test out um, a nonprofit idea or a business idea that can help eliminate poverty, this is a great opportunity for you to, to exercise your skill set so you can know where you want to go further in life and also how you want to serve the communities that are, are being addressed either within the Promise Zone or wherever you go as an AmeriCorps. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, and I think with that, um, we can put all of our panelists back up to say thank you for taking the time to answer questions. And for our young people out there, you know, this is a paid opportunity with a stipend and all of the benefits um, that were talked about. There are links in all of the social media channels. There are links in the bio on Instagram um, for you to get connected to more information about this opportunity. Like Tiffany said, you know, I have the privilege of being the co-chair for the Economic Activities Working Group. And just this month, we had small businesses from Barrio Logan telling us their very real stories about the struggles of operating in COVID-19 and brought, you know, 30 people on our Zoom call to tears talking about, you know, the help that they received, the help that they gave one another. Uh, and it just makes the work that we all do supporting the Promise Zone more fulfilling when we get connected to people who are living in the communities doing running their business in the communities, getting educated in our communities. So we really hope that all of the young people out there um, who are residents of the city of San Diego or of the region or of the Promise Zone specifically will bring your lived experiences to make this opportunity fruitful. So with that, I'll hand it over to Sio so she can have the last word. I just wanted to thank everyone for being here today. I know that we all live very busy lives, but please, if you do have any further questions about the position and everything that it entails, do not hesitate to reach out to either Alex here on our team leading the recruitment effort or myself. Um, I am very committed to making sure that the Promise Zone um, you know, um, is, is the best initiative that it can't be. We only have five years left in the designation. And I think that um, VISTAs are a key Part of what we do and we're hoping to continue on that um, capacity building resource that they do provide and that therefore we we're ultimately creating lasting impact within our within our communities so thank you everyone for being here today and i hope that um you are able to partake in one of our many meetings here in the promise zone if if you're not able to apply so um have a lovely monday